Hotline TV. I'm Quinn McCord. And I'm John Mercurio. Well, the hotline may not be Goldman Sachs, but we still do love our money, don't we, Quinn McCord? And what a coincidence. It's first quarter FEC reporting time. Yes, it is. Thanks for joining us. Um, so let's talk about who's got cash, Quinn. Who uh, impressed you the most this quarter? Who did not impress you the most? Uh, stuff like that. Let's just go through the numbers and tell a little story to the viewers. Well, there's one really impressive number. Let's go through. First of all, the winners. Yeah, the, what would be called the winners of that. Y Please, yes. Go. Well, obviously, Marco Rubio had a huge three and a half million dollar quarter. I've heard. It's not too surprising, but I mean that vaulted into the top of. He's on the the, the top list. Um, okay. Mark Kirk did too. Mark Kirk you know? did pretty well. He beat Giannullius, I think, right? He had more money. Yeah, I mean, he had a, he had like a two million dollar quarter. Now he has like three million on hand. And you know, for a moderate Republican, mm -hmm. unlike a, a Rubio, like is a favorite of like the club, etc. In Obama's home state, too. Yeah. Right. Um, that's very impressive too. All right. Um, I'm gonna, I got two. Okay. That I mentioned the two sure. that I was thinking of. Rob Portman. Look, the Ohio Senate race has been a little nebulous. It's been hard for people to figure out. The polls have shown Portman up, and then they've shown Fisher up. Um, there's a little action going on in the Democratic prim primary side, but the FEC reports, I think, put some delineation or distinction between the two races. Portman up with, I think, $2.4 million during the quarter, and Fisher only raised about $500,000. Uh, Jennifer Bruner's numbers just coming in on Tuesday morning uh, at only a little bit over 100000 So combined, the Democrats didn't raise anything close to a fraction of what Portman raised. So I think the the the, the storyline or the conventional wisdom coming out of the FEC reports for Ohio will be that Portman has a little bit of an edge and, for and now. And the other one I'm going to say is Bill Halter came through as expected. A lot of uh, money from organized labor raised far more than Blanche Lincoln, I think, like in the two quarter, million, um, and spent significantly less. Yep. I think um, to have us uh, getting closer to, to an incumbent uh, who's been in office for almost 12 years and cash on hand is pretty good. Yeah, um, and, and Portman's been doing this every quarter, too. It's not just one good quarter. I mean, every right. quarter is like a solid quarter. Exactly. All right, now, who are some of the losers from these FEC numbers that you'd like to talk about? I don't like to call them losers. It seems like such a judgment call, don't sure. you, don't you right. think? But I, will call, but I will say that Fisher, again, uh, Lee Fisher and Jennifer Bruner in Ohio, um, I'm going to call, yeah, sure, why not? Losers. Um, and on the other side of the aisle, because I like to have bipartisan losers. Sure. I think that there are five Republicans in Arkansas Running Ouch. against Bill Halter and Blanche Lincoln, five of the seven or eight, I think, that are running. We didn't have uh, Hendren or Coleman's numbers, but five of the seven raised s seriously underwhelming um, reports. So despite the fact that Republicans look at Arkansas as a big pickup opportunity, they don't have anybody, at least as far as we know, in the race right now um, who's got the money to compete against either an incumbent or uh, a statewide office holder, Bill Halter. Yeah, well, you know, I have a couple sets of losers. One is all the Democrats running in North Carolina, none of them were man enough or woman enough to release their numbers. Okay, every time the Democrats keep saying, oh, Richard Burr, his polling numbers are so bad, you know, he's, he's right for the picking. You know, if you're not even brave enough to release your numbers. Well, and I think we know from inside sources that the numbers aren't impressive. Yeah, I mean, in North Carolina's not a cheap state, it's a big state. I mean, and, and if the Democrats can't, run it, can't raise any money right now, you know, it's not looking to, as a good pickup opportunity. Also, Andrew Romanoff, mm -hmm. he was supposed to be this top tier primary challenger. You know, I mean, the notion that he'd be the Democrats' Marco Rubio is probably laughable at this point. Mm -hmm. um, or not, he's not even Joe Sestak, so he only raised a few hundred thousand. And, you know, I, I realize that, uh, I mean, again, Colorado, you know, it's great that he has a lot of grassroots support, but he's still going to have to go on TV for the primary right. uh, to beat Michael Bennett, and I don't see that happening. All right, weirdness going on, Quinn, that you're seeing in Florida. I'm sorry, I just gave away my, my weird pick. Oh, any weird that, that, picks that, that's that you weird notice? by itself. Well, actually. I'll mention, I'll talk about it, not to keep the suspense. I thought it was interesting well, in Florida. <laughs> sorry, you go. <laughs> Fine, I'll go first. Because I have a few weird things to talk about, John. But you already actually started talking about it, which is all these Republicans in oh. contested tight races. <laughs> I'm sorry for touching you, it was inadvertent. Um, who can't seem to raise money? You talked about the Arkansas Republicans. Right, I did. But it's also true in Nevada, in Colorado. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and in Indiana, with, you know, even Dan Coats got hundred thousand. I mean, I, I think it's weird that that. So I guess the Republican donors are just waiting for these primaries to be over. Sure, I but, can see that. But it, but it's very. I mean, it's, it's just weird to look at all these. Oh, Harry Reid is as good as dead. Well, he may be. I mean, in retrospect, we may see that. Oh, Harry Reid could never win. Blanche could never win. But the Republicans are raising no money in any of these supposedly toss-up races, which is just, just 
just got weird. It got weird, didn't it? In Florida, too, I have to go back to my, uh, my weird Florida comment, which is that, look, Henrik Meek is considered sort of an also-ran in what's in all, in everybody focused on the Florida Senate primary between Charlie Crist and Marco Rubio. But look, Henrik Meek raised almost as much money uh, no, he didn't raise anywhere near as much money as Marco Rubio, but he's got almost as much money on hand, 3.9 to 3.8 million dollars. Which, which can, and of course, a lot of what Rubio's doing is spending money on uh, a Republican primary against Charlie Crist. He might not be doing that for much longer. That would at least free him up uh, in a three-way race and would, at, would force Meek, I think, to start running. But it shows you, I think, that Meek remains a viable candidate in that race. I agree, John. All right, let's, one quick last thing, quick. Quinn McCord, last words. Will any of these candidates, looking at all the numbers that you've got on that list, are any of the candidates uh, doing so poorly in fundraising after the first quarter that you think you're gonna, they're going to be forced to drop out because of it? Probably not, because oh. it's what's well, so late. All the filing deadlines have passed. All right. You know, for the most part, I mean, they're in. I mean, I mean Jennifer Brunner, we were talking about for, for months. We were like, well, will she really, really run? Well. It's just too late. She's in. She's in. She's and, running. And actually, her polling, she's not too far behind Lee Fisher. I mean, it's That's statistically true. tied. So right. at this point, you might as well just stay in rather than, unless you're Charlie Crist, okay. who kind of looks, you know, who knows what he'll be going to do. But right. well, we'll what do by, you think? We'll know by April 30th. I agree with you. It's too late for anybody to drop out, technically. Um, but I think of the numbers that I saw, Chuck DeVores, a state assemblyman in California uh, in that Senate race, um, his numbers are so unimpressive compared to Carly Fiorina and former Congressman Tom Campbell. He raised about a third of what each of those other two candidates and nothing close to what Barbara Boxer raised. Barack Obama, of course, raising money for uh, Boxer uh, on Monday in L.A. That I think if this were an earlier report and it was showing um, DeVore to be doing so poorly, um, he would have to think uh, very seriously. But he's got the grassroots behind him, John. Well, that doesn't, you know. You know that and 20 cents will, won't buy you uh, a cup of coffee. I can understand that. So. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right, well, there you go. That is our Hotline TV FEC special report. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you on Hotline TV. There we go.